Good afternoon, it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, as a hydrologist, I've structured my talk around a series of photos of swimming and water. Uh, and the first slide is asking this question, should I dive in? And that's kind of the theme of this talk. Of, I'm really trying to address just some advice, just like we heard of how and why um, I communicate on social media and traditional media and some mistakes I made along the way. So during my PhD, I was swimming in a river taking uh, groundwater discharge measurements. My research is on groundwater uh, sustainability and groundwater science. And I, I kind of formulated what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, Jeff McDonnell uh, here calls it his research brand. I think that's a great way to describe it. This is my goal, and I think everyone needs to find a goal. And so this is my goal. I'm not telling you that you should just grab my goal. You should find your own. Uh, but my goal is uh, to positively contribute to the sustainable use of groundwater globally using policy-relevant science and outreach. That's what I was thinking while I was swimming. And I also realized while I was swimming that I'm a really creative person. I actually want to express my ideas and my creativity through things beyond just the peer-reviewed literature. I love writing articles. I love being part of the peer-reviewed academic world. But I also think there's more to the world and there's more ways that we can express ourselves as scientists. So the kind of questions that I think as we start to realize these things, at least this is the questions I started to think about, is what do I want to get out of it? If I'm going to engage with social or traditional media, uh, what motivates me? Uh, not enough people actually ask these questions. What do I want to say and why? Does this further my research brand? A lot of people are just like, let's sign up for Twitter, sign up for Twitter, sign up for Twitter. And I'm like, okay, but why? Time is limited, so why? So the, the first If you decide that you want to move into the social media or traditional media world, it gets pretty overwhelming very quickly. You know, this cloud of stuff. We're all very busy people. Uh, and I think you really need to set your priorities. So once you decide on the why and why you want to do it and what it can do for you, I think you really have to set your priorities. So as a scientist, I opened up Excel. And I put at the very top of the sheet uh, my overall priority, my goal to positively contribute, blah, blah, blah. And then I made a list in priority of how I'm gonna spend my time. So the first thing I do if I have five minutes uh, or 10 minutes or whatever, I update my website. Or I talk to, if a journalist calls, I talk to them. That's media or print. I have a personal blog, I have a blog that I lead about groundwater, Twitter, et cetera. So you can just think about how you wanna use your time, how you wanna structure it, and how to move forward in this kind of overwhelming media landscape that we live in. And uh, the rest of my talk is really, now that we've kinda, I've kind of talked a little bit about why, is somewhere around the, the how. So I break that both into traditional media and social media, because I think they're quite different. I think uh, Hubert did a great job of kind of describing some of the pitfalls and problems and, and, and reasons and purposes and, and advantages of talking to traditional media. Uh, and here are some of the things I've learned along the way, and I've had a few moments as well of uh, swimming along in the river of an interview and being like, oh my God, did I just say that? Uh, and, or why are they asking me that? And you really have to be on the spot and uh, come up with things. So some of the things I've learned along the way to get myself into the eyes of traditional media journalists is first of all to do interesting and useful science, ideally published in high impact journals. That's not essential, but the, a lot of journalists, science journalists at least, are following you know, the highest impact journals and that's where most of the articles are written around those. A, very, a lot of the same messages as Hubert, be humble, honest, and engaging. Don't, over, don't oversell uh, and use natural language. What I mean by that is words, no acronyms, no, uh, no jargon, words that your grandmother or grandfather would understand. I, I live on an island and we often take a ferry to get to that island and I test my science communication by the person I sit beside on the ferry. So it can be anybody. <laughs> And, and, I, and so that's where, how I test my kind of capacity to speak in natural language. Uh, practice your message, have one to three key points and actually stick to them. It sounds like um, you know, I'm a politician, but it actually works. You know, figure out what you wanna say and make sure you say it while you're in the interview. Make and keep a media network. So that, you know, I have a whole, another whole Excel sheet on journalists I've spoken to. And use your media relations people. Every organization has generally has someone that writes uh, press releases and supports people and you just have to use them they're they're at your service so the how for social media is a is a little bit uh, different in my eyes i love this image of uh, this monkey with his cell phone i'm actually uh swimming uh i actually don't have a smartphone 
I'm a, I'm a smartphone holdout. Uh, and I, I think that's just one of those choices about priorities I've made. So, and I think, so what I, I'm trying to, why I'm saying that is you don't have to be immersed 100% of the time in social media and be on your phone and, and playing with your phone while you're, you should be talking to your kids or whoever, um, just to be part of social media as a scientist. Um, some things that I've learned in kind of engaging in social media is to make or find a community to share the journey with. We all live all around the world and I've found it to be a very, um, a very nice part of this work is actually just making more connections and having more communication across different geographies with people I don't uh, interact with very much. Um, uh, I think it's really important, and this is why I don't have a, a, a smartphone, to do, always just do activities that you find energy giving rather than energy sapping. So do things that excite you, invigorate you, make you want to do more, and be as active as you want to be. So some of the mistakes I've made along the way, um, similar to the previous speaker, was too many press releases. I thought, oh, every paper needs a press release. Well, uh, there's a whole bunch of papers that no one called me about. <laughs> uh, and I learned ch to check your, you know, ch choose your battle battles with press releases. And I started to blog alone, and then after about a year, I kind of got a little bit weighed down by that. I stopped writing posts, so now I have this whole community where, that we write together. Having a clear message and knowing why, and to end, I just suggest that if you're interested to dive in, uh, go for it. And uh, with the three messages, figure out what you want to do uh, or, and why you want to do it and to be yourself. And I just encourage you to join the conversation with me or many other people. This is Twitter, my blog uh, that I run called Water Underground, which is an EGU, AGU blog and a research website. Thank you very much. <laughs>